Hi, my name is Angel Rivero, and right now I am with Doctora Satrina Castillo, who is in fact one of the youngest doctors in the field of reproductive medicine. Nax, Doc, what made you decide to take a specialization in reproductive medicine? Um, back when I was in residency, I was really um, inclined towards reproductive endocrinology. Wow. Um, parang it's one of the most difficult, actually, subspecialty um, in obstetrics and gynecology. Pero for me, it's challenging understanding about hormones. Yeah. And siguro, ganun, the more difficult it is, the more um, you are forced to study. And diba, otherwise, parang if it's not difficult, hindi ka challenge to read about Oo, it. Oo nga. Parang you take it for granted yes. lang. This mm. one, parang there's always a challenge. Yes. Having, You're forced to read on it yes. and really ano, study it. And having said that, parang mabilis yung pag-progress ng technology. Yes. What is available now was not available before. Then, yes. And um, is there any advice you can give to people who are in that stage of life wherein they want to have a child, but so far, it has not yet been working out for them? Okay, so siguro let's start first with defining what um, infertility is or okay. when a couple should seek consult. So, okay. um, we label a couple as infer an infertile couple when it has been a year already mm -hmm. of regular intercourse. Mm -hmm. So, there might be couples consulting. They say they have been together for two years already and yet one of the partner is working abroad. So, it's understandable they don't yeah. do it regularly. <laughs> Compared to someone who has been together, let's say, one and a half years, mm -hmm. they live together, they've been doing it for at least three, two to three times a week, then you may say they're having regular intercourse and yet they, they're still not pregnant. So, mm -hmm. um, you tell the couples that it, they've been married for already for a year mm -hmm. with regular intercourse, no form of contraception, then, and yet there's no pregnancy after a year, then they should be seeking consult. However, that's not applicable for all patients. So, Ooh. for older patients, more than 35 years old, <laughs> who have other problems, so they may be 25 years old, but they have endometriosis, yes. they have... Um, uh, previous surgeries, mm -hmm. uh, previous ovarian surgeries, um, that any risk factor that you might think there might be problems with fertility, then they should be seeking earlier. They do not have to wait for a year mm -hmm. to seek consult. Instead, uh, we usually give it six months. For example, for those patients with endometriosis or those women who experience severe dysmenorrhea, mm -hmm. who can't get pregnant after six years, they should be seeking consult right away. Wow, I see. So it, it's a very complex field because sometimes even if you're young, you don't know that you have all these conditions pala. Exactly. And it's actually sad when we see patients at the latter part already of their married mm -hmm. life and yet they're not yet pregnant. So... Um, I feel really bad for those patients who has been married for five years and it's only mm -hmm. now that they're um, seeking you or asking you for help that um, you're, you quite feel bad for them that you should have uh, seen them earlier and have could have intervened er way earlier. Yes, but could we still go as far as saying that there's still hope pa naman? Of course, of course. Okay. I always tell my patient, even for those, what's the longest? I think the, lo the couple with the longest course of uh, infertility that I've encountered is I think for more than almost 20 years and I tell them with the advances in oh science there's no such thing as no. Yes. You can say no to a patient with the uh, um, availability of the medicine, the technology, mm -hmm. there is always an option for a patient. Yes, I agree and that's a very positive attitude. Yes. Now uh, let's go to the options available for people who are seeking to to fix their infertility. Okay, so it actually depends on the problem. Mm -hmm. So I always, that I think um, that spells the difference between a general obstetrician gynecologist mm -hmm. from a specialist. Yes. So for us, of course, we tend to receive patients who have been trying for so long and yet uh, still are not successful in getting pregnant. So we usually complete the basic work up first before mm -hmm. we offer any intervention. The common mistake is that uh, patient right away take left and right um, infertility medication, yeah. ovula ovulation induction agent without even testing for the semen analysis, mm -hmm. without checking for the patency of the fallopian tube. So I think it's really um, advisable that for those 
who actually fit the infertility um, diagnosis should seek consult care of a specialist mm -hmm. and uh, they should understand that before any intervention is offered, they have to complete the three basic tests first. So at the minimum, I okay. ask for the um, at least an ultrasound, okay. um, hysterosalpingogram to, uh, to assess the fallopian tube and then semen analysis. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's the time I will give them the different options. Mm -hmm. So options can be as simple as giving them ovulation induction medication. Mm -hmm. um, it can be as simple as an oral medication or what we have um, right now with the advance of, uh, advances in technology are the gonad uh, gonadotropins, which are injectable medication to induce um, ovulation, super ovulation of the ovaries for higher chances of pregnancy. Okay. So it can be as simple as that and then you coach the patient, you tell the patient when are when? the best times okay. to do it to as um, uh, sophisticated as in vitro fertilization. We usually offer in vitro fertilization for those with fallopian tube problems, mm -hmm. those with male factor infertility, mm -hmm. and uh, for those patients with advanced maternal age already. I see. Are the three um, basic tests that you mentioned, the yes. third is a uh, sperm count. Yes. So that is also to make it clear to all our viewers that hindi lang naman babae. Yes, exactly. That's why um, another point is um, I encourage my patients to bring their male partners mm -hmm. during consult because I have to explain to them, especially in front of their uh, partners, that the investigation is not solely for the women because yes. it's always i tell them it's always 50 50. Mm -hmm. it's um to make a baby you need a sperm and an egg a normal sperm a normal egg so uh definitely uh, i would want to know the status of the male first to make sure that i don't have to intervene yes that's right now say for example you found out na there is a male factor so how are these addressed okay so it depends um so uh, the three main things that we look at the semen analysis would be the concentration or mm -hmm. the amount of uh, sperm per ml of um of sperm uh, the percentage of uh, the percentage of motile sperm and then the percentage of uh, the normal form of sperm so it actually depends on the abnormality on how we will manage so usually if, if there will be um, motility and concentration problem we would request for different um, hormonal tests um, and from there the medication will again vary so mm -hmm. um, uh, we there are different male um, factor uh, there are different male problem mm -hmm. or male factor that contributes to the fertility and there might there are problems that will warrant referral to a urology specialist it's I like see. the ob of the male of the men, yeah. Yeah. And th there can be simple problems such that um, it's only the semen analysis which is subnormal and then the rest of the hormone is normal then you can offer some form of medical management so it's very important actually to um, to seek consult first before mm -hmm. doing anything, before taking any medication. Mm -hmm. That's like case-to-case basis. Case-to-case case basis. It's not, um, it's not as simple as your sperm, are, sperm count is low, you take this. No, yeah. there are so <laughs> many problems associated with um, uh, low, way below uh, number of um, sperm cells. And mm -hmm. there are different types of management. So it's really important to see a specialist mm -hmm. for that. May mga nagtanong sa akin, Doc, na paano ba nabibilang ang sperm? Because if there are millions, yes. so parang binibilang ba nila? We use a macular. Okay. Um, it's, um, how do I explain? It's like a, uh, like a, a container okay. for sperm. So it gives an estimate uh, that for every number of sperm occupying an a square area. in that, um, ah. in that uh, uh, container is equivalent to a million uh, sperm. Ah, may ganon. Yes, there's a counter for that. <laughs> so it's not actually that they count um, uh, every piece every of sperm, single, but yeah. um, a number of sperm per box will give you, you will multiply it to a factor. I see, uh, and, and then, that's how they yes, determine. Yes, And the, the motility naman, Doc, parang so they watch it swim from point A to point B? Same manner, so how, how much of that sperm occupying per box is motile. Ah. And then for the forms, it's 
uh, it's observed under higher magnification of um, of microscopy. So it's really it, uh, that's another also important point for those. I highly recommend for those um, male patients who present with an abnormal um, semen analysis mm -hmm. that their semen analysis be done in. Uh, specialized institutions, specifically in an IVF centers, because um, unfortunately, not all medical technologies in the hospitals are um, trained to read semen analysis the WHO 2010 way. So it's ah. only those um, embryologists, those uh, medical technologists working in an IVF center which are actually trained for that. I see. So if you are for those, even for those general obstetrician, if they are quite um, suspicious of the manner the semen analysis was read, um, I would suggest that they send it to IVF center so okay. that the reading would be more accurate. Okay. Doc, if we could take a few steps back. Okay. What sometimes contributes to this condition happening in men? Oh, is it like a work hazard, um, lifestyle? Lifestyle, of course, mm -hmm. is a major factor. Um, eating habits, um, obesity, ah. smoking <laughs> is a trip, um, causes decrease in the count and motility. Mm -hmm. um, alcohol intoxication or intake can also cause um, decrease in motility and concentration. Mm -hmm. Stress. Stress. Yes. Ah. And they say, although there are uh, limited evidence, but working in a hot environment, so for those who are working in the kitchen, um, the chef, that. the cook, and also there, um, there are more chances of a lower um, concentration and mm -hmm. motility for those men working in a hot environment. I see. Would you say that this condition is reversible? Pa? Y yes, it depends. Of course, once you are not exposed to that anymore, once you studies have shown that when you decrease your alcohol consumption, when you stop smoking, when you change your lifestyle, you decrease your sugar intake, mm -hmm. have some form of regular exercise, then aside from the what is really warranted, the medication, mm -hmm. the surgical intervention, of course, it will add up to improving your semen quality. Wow. So that in itself can help with the... Um, improving your semen analysis. So, may pag-asa pa kayo, mga yes. guys. <laughs> Ngayon po, yung mga, yung mga myths natin when it comes to fertility, no? Uh, we have heard bizarre things such as um, drinking coffee before having intercourse, that it increases the chances now of the sperm getting to the egg. Is there any truth to that? As of now, I haven't come across a uh, good literature mm. or any um, randomized control trial um, supporting that um, mm. uh, belief. So, I don't think coffee affects um, fertility. Parang malabo yun. Overconsumption actually of caffeine can affect uh, for, it, um, for both males and females. Negatively. But yes, yes. But again, still um, limited evidence on that. I see, I see. What about naman, Doc, um, women who choose to lie on their backs for longer times to give the sperm time to swim up their bodies? Okay. For that, uh, still no evidence, but mm -hmm. in, in when we do um, advanced reproductive technology such as insemination and um, uh, in vitro fertilization, mm -hmm. It makes sense that you make the patient lie for some period of time for us for let's say let's say 30 minutes but there's no evidence but then when you think about it um, part of the um, uh, fertilization is that the travel of the sperm towards yeah. the, the fallopian tube which based on uh, on our readings is can be uh, can last for two to five minutes so when you think about it it's nothing it's really not a waste of time in staying by mm -hmm. lying down for the next 30 minutes after intercourse. So, Bakit hindi? Why, not? why not? <laughs> With the potential benefit. Yeah, but again, no. Uh, no evidence. Okay. So, when consulting uh, a doctor like yourself, you highly recommend that the couple goes to visit you together? Yes, yes. Okay. And then, should they be economically prepared na? Because, I mean, magastos ba to pursue this route? It actually, it depends on the diagnosis. I so, see. for example, if maybe the couple is doing it the wrong way, they don't yeah. know when the ovulation is, wh when they have limited time of do actually doing it, then it's not really that expensive because all mm -hmm. you have to do is guide them when it comes to the ovulation period versus for those with um, 
bigger problems, those with um, more complicated reasons for the infertility, such as um, a tubal blockage, mm. a low sperm count that would warrant um, in vitro fertilization. Um, it's uh, a little on the expensive side, but not that expensive compared to before. There ah. are so yes, the medications are more acceptable now, mm -hmm. and I always tell to my patient it depends on how bad you want to have a kid. Yeah, the same thing as when you want to buy a car or a house. If you really want to, if you really want it to happen, then you'll save for it. You'll, That's you'll, right. E effort and in yes. no? That's right. Um, so finally, do you have any advice for people who are in this boat right now and who are considering, oh, maybe I'll see a doctor, I don't know, it's kind of taboo, I'm ashamed. So who have these kind of feelings? Okay. Actually, nowadays, um, uh, couples are more open. I'm actually glad that couples are now more often seeking consult um, when it regards to for their fertility. Um, uh, for couples out there, don't be afraid. Um, it's actually best, it will be best or better for you if at an earlier time you come into your doctor, ask questions already, if alre it's already been a year of regularly, of trying regularly, um, with no form of contraception and you think there's no problem and yet you still can't get pregnant, you can, all hospitals nowadays have their infertility specialists mm -hmm. who can help them. And the longer you wait, the more you delay uh, the consult, the mm -hmm. chances of you, the chances of it being, uh, of a pregnancy being easier to achieve would be farther, I mean harder. So it's better, it's actually a factor, the longer, the, the, longer the duration of the infertility, mm -hmm. the harder for us doctors to help them. So, ah. it's really best for them to consult right away and don't delay it too much. Okay, so talagang now na. Yes, okay. especially for those patients who are more than 35 years okay. and above. Got it. Thank yes. you, Doc. Yes. <laughs>